Well, folks, first of all, have a, I hope you've had a, a very happy new year, despite uh, all the shenanigans that's going on in the world at the moment. Um, this is the first clear night we've had uh, here uh, since uh, the 1st of January. And what I thought I'd do, because it's actually quite a clear night now, it's actually sleek, same looks good, is I'm going to have a go at um, imaging a supernova remnant, uh, which is known as the Spaghetti Nebula. I'm Dr Ray and welcome to Astrogadge. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the Spaghetti Nebula, or to use its proper designation, I think it's Semise, I think that's how you pronounce it. Semise 147, or uh, Sharpless 2 240, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, otherwise, just call it Spaghetti ne Nebula. It's 3,000 light years away. It's the remains of a supernova <laughs> that blew up. 40,000 years ago. <laughs> um, and um, it has a very low surface brightness and its angular size in the sky is about three degrees, which makes it uh, the equivalent of six full moons. So very large in the sky and very dim, making it a difficult object to, to, to image. So you can see here in Stellarium that uh, using the using the Sharp Star 61 with the 0.8 reducer and the SI2600. Uh, it's, it's still quite hard to see even in Stellarium. But that combination of kit just about gets the whole thing in. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get a good composition on it if we capture it at all. Um, it lies between the constellations of Auriga and Gemini, um, uh, although in many star atlases it's designated as belonging to the constellation of Taurus. In order to try and image this object, because it's pretty big, uh, it's got a low surface brightness and uh, as I said it's, it's about three degrees, occupies about three <laughs> degrees in the sky, I'm going to need something with a pretty big field of view and some fairly long exposures I think. So uh, as usual, I'm going to try an image using the Sharp Star EDPH2 um, with the 0.8 reducer and the ZWO2600MC Pro. Cause it's, uh, so I should be able to take advantage of the, the large field of view that that combination um, confers. So we're in for a bit of a session. Um, I'll get back to you in a bit. Here we are um, in the house. It's uh, a little while later, well, uh, quite a, quite a while later actually. So as usual, I've transferred control of the session to the laptop and desktop in the house just to keep uh, a bit warm. And as you can see, things are actually going, dare I say it, swimmingly well. Uh, at the moment, we have no uh, wind or clouds around. It's you know, to spoil the fun, we're on frame 28, and uh, you know, as I said earlier, the problem is this thing is so um, faint and spread over quite a large portion of the sky. I'm not sure uh, if you can see it here, probably not, but uh, 
and this laptop at least, but um, there's uh, some kind of I can see I can see the vague outline of parts of the structure here, and I'm just hoping that the um, the amount of uh, subs I've got is sufficient integration to bring out detail. You know, so it's it's, it's going to be interesting. Just got to continue the run and uh, see what happens. I'm actually passing the time uh, monitoring the session by <laughs> watching some data on the James Webb Telescope. And it uh, all seems to be looking good so far, fingers crossed. Just in case you were wondering what I was wearing earlier, it's actually a, a diving undersuit <laughs> that I use with my dry suit when I'm scuba diving in the North Sea off the east coast of uh, the UK. The temperatures in the summer are around about 10 degrees centigrade. Um, but it makes a perfect, uh, a perfect garment for cold nights out in the observatory. Well guys, um, I think I'm going to call it a night here because although this, the skies are technically clear, there's a lot of high cloud and the transparency has really suffered now. It's really uh, deteriorated quite considerably. So uh, looking at the subs coming in, they're not of the same quality as the ones early on. It's been not a bad session tonight. We've had about uh, four hours uh, worth of reasonable data. And uh, in addition uh, to the conditions, the object's probably going to go behind the house in the next sort of hour or so, so I think it's about time to call it quits. <laughs> You'll notice I've got the, the diving uh, <laughs> undersuit on again because it's minus four here. Uh, I, I know that's nothing compared to some of our colleagues in the Arctic Circle, but for me it's, it's pretty cold. So I'm going to call it a night here and uh, I'll speak to you as soon as I, I get to process this stuff. Catch you later. Part. What a difference a few hours makes. Looks like it just got in under the, the wires, this thing. So here we are in uh, PixInsight. I, I got about just over four hours worth of usable data in the end. Um, and this is pretty much what it looked like uh, once it was calibrated and integrated. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a gradient here. Uh, I'm just going to uh, do a, a bit of a time lapse of, of the process I went through my workflow, which is pretty much the same as uh, other objects uh, I've done videos on. But uh, this one needed a little bit more teasing than, than perhaps uh, brighter objects did, as you might expect. So uh, here we go with a, a kind of quick run through of what I did and the, the, final, the final image. Well folks, that went a lot better than I'd hoped for, uh, particularly with such a large object and its, its low surface brightness. Uh, I mean, particularly when you look at the uh, individual subs, you can see there's not, not, not an awful lot of detail there, to say the least. Uh, and it just shows you the, 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 the power of uh, using lots and lots of sub-exposures and integrating them. 
Ideally, I would have liked uh, more integration time in that object, but unfortunately that's just not going to happen for, for a number of reasons. Um, but nonetheless, I, 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 think, uh, I think it came out not too badly, um, to my surprise. Um, what I'd be really interested uh, to see is uh, for you guys that have got Rasus, uh, I think it makes quite a good object uh, for you to image. Um, if you do, please please send me send me your results. I'd be really interested to see them. Just like to say thanks for watching. I hope you you find it uh, interesting, amusing, entertaining, whatever. Uh, and uh, thanks uh, f for all you people that have subscribed. For those of you that are new to the channel, and if, if you like the content, please please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost anything. It just means that you get the heads up in any uh, future content that I may produce. So uh, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. And remember, keep watching the skies. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.